Welcome back. Well, uh, we're going to move on to the big story that's been dominating at least uh, the online space for the last 48 hours. Actor Tanushri Datta has spoken out about abuse that she claimed she faced, harassment that she faced uh, on Nana Patekar, by Nana Patekar, who's of course a, a superstar in the, in the film industry. Uh, an incident that happened uh, about 10 years ago on the film set that they worked on. Mr. Patekar has denied the allegations, but Tanushri has stuck to her stand. I spoke to her earlier today. Well, Tanushri, you have come out with the story of the harassment you faced on the sets of a film. You've said that Nana Patekar was the one who harassed you. May I ask what made you speak out now? Often people do take time to speak when they go through a trauma like this. So, so what triggered it at this time? You know, um, Anidhi, I have uh, spoken about it earlier also. I spoke about it when it happened. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, the narrative uh, that is being spun now is that I'm speaking out after 10 years. It's not true. There was a big fiasco that happened with the media and everything back in the day. It was covered by all major publications, channels. In fact, the media was there when this whole thing was happening. Everything is on record on, and on camera. So it's not like I'm coming up with some uh, new uh, thing right now. What's happened right now is that I've come back to India after two years and also haven't been uh, away from the film industry for so long that a lot of people just wanted to know why I have been away and uh, you know why I have been away from the industry and I answered them honestly like why uh, because all of this went down and I didn't get justice and you know, of course I took the spiritual path because that's where I could find uh, some semblance of hope for justice in future you know. Because I, I didn't really trust human beings to, you know, kind of... Well, well, sorry, sorry. What exactly did happen back then when, when you raised your voice about what happened? I'm sorry, even I don't remember it. But how, how was this sort of taken by the media, for instance? See, the, it was covered. I wouldn't say that, you know, there was uh, silence on part of the media. That's not true. The media extensively covered it. It's just that some part of the media was biased in his favor, in their favor. And there was, a, there was a bias already against me in certain segments of the media and certain segments of the media came, completely came forward and supported me because God knows and we all know we've always had wonderful feminist women, you know. So uh, I did get my support I, and even really great guys, you know, who, who will come out to support especially when they're witnessing something has you know, happened, it was all recorded. So I did get some of that support. but. Nothing came out of it. That's what is disheartening that it's been 10 years and I had to finally give up that fight and move away because you cannot keep fighting and fighting and fighting if there is no end to that battle. You know, I chose to not fight that battle at that point of time. After a couple of years, you know, when another thing that you know, I've spoken about is the FIR that I filed against them. There was a counter FIR filed on, on us even before we filed the FIR. So the harassment didn't just end after what happened on the set. The harassment continued for years after that with my dad, with my hairdresser, with my spot boy being called to the police station every couple of months. Any time, because that's, that's police karwai process is like that yeah, only. It is, it Any time they call you, you scary. have to be there. Well, you know, the point is, as you said, you, you spoke out about this when it happened. The, the point is then obviously you need someone to hear you, to listen to what you're saying. And how do you then plan to fight this now? You know, I need someone to take action now because people have heard enough. I am tired of hearing myself. I'm honestly tired of hearing myself. It's the same, same story. This happened and then that happened and this happened. I want action because from my side, this is all that I can do. You know, when in our country there is this talk about Me Too movement and why it's not happening. You know, how this whole thing started in the last couple of days. I was doing an interview. I was simply talking and interacting with the media because I wanted to set some records straight. Because as I was away for the last 10 years, 8 years almost, there were different kind of gossips and stories that were circulating in the media about why I'm away, what happened to me. There were these half-baked things being circulated which is affecting my life even if I'm away in America because when I go for a job interview and they google me and they see all kinds of weird random stories there 
I have to now then sit at an interview and explain what those means. So, you know, all the lies that were circulated about me 10 years ago, those lies are still on public domain for everybody to access, including my prospective new employers all the way in the US. So, I had to clarify and speak about certain things so that at least on my side the record has been set straight and I have told people that dude, these people lied, do not just carry forward lies, you know. Anyways, I was doing that and somebody asked me what about the Me Too movement, I said how can the Me Too movement happen if I do not get justice what, to what happened 10 years ago and that is when the whole thing went viral. So, this is what is happening right now, I have been brought in to speak about my story again for a movement that you guys want in this country and the max I can do is repeat my story again, what more can I do? The rest somebody else has to do. And, and therefore, are you disappointed then with how Bollywood and the film industry has has reacted or not reacted to not just this story but to these issues in general? I mean, does the film industry then lack a spine to speak out? You know, I am very disappointed. I am hurt by the industry's attitude towards it. Like every single person in this country knows exactly what happened, especially the industry because the industry knows what kind of man he is. Nana Patekar is not a good human being, he has never been a good human being, he has never been a good man and he has never been a respectable person. So, because the industry knows this, that is why nobody from the industry is even standing up and supporting him except Ganesh Acharya who is equally bad who is equally a lecherous guy, he is one of the worst guys to work with. I mean imagine this guy, I recommended his name for the song, he got the job because of me and then he turns around and starts calling me names, he just does not about turn. You know the worst kind of person is an ungrateful person, he used to suck up to me all the time, you know if you ever do a song again please remember me this and that, I did remember him and I actually gave him that song and this is how he paid me back. So, He's a, these are the only people who are supporting each other. Have you heard anybody from the industry coming forward in support of Nana Patikar? They will not because they all know how he is. But you know sadly Tanushree they are not coming out in your support either and to me that is really the sad part about the film industry today. That's what is most, yeah that's what is most hurtful because I was the victim here in this case. I was attacked. My car was broken. My mom and dad were sitting inside the car Nidhi. I will never ever I can forgive everything in life but I cannot forget that my mom and dad were sitting inside the car when the car was being attacked. What if something had happened to them? No, I can imagine it's, it's it sounds terrifying. They sacrificed so much in their life just to bring me up and to bring me to where I am today and because of me they were in that situation where their life was in danger. No, it sounds… It, my sister it, it is petrified. It sounds, it sounds terrible and it sounds scary. Tanshri, thank you for speaking out on this and and, and telling your side of the story uh, and I want to mention here uh, that nobody from the film industry is willing to come out and participate in these programs for instance uh, that we are doing and I presume some other channels have been trying since yesterday as well. Not a single person is really willing to step forward and, and speak and somehow that does not surprise us. Nana Patekar himself has given one statement uh, which I am quoting from now uh, saying that he will take legal action that there were a 50 to 100 people on the set with him at the time, what can I do about it, you tell me and then of course threatening to sue. Anna Vetikard back in the studio with us, she is of course an author and well known film critic and Janice Sequera joins us tonight, she is a former journalist and a content creator and someone who is actually eyewitness to what happened with Tanushree on that set all those years ago. Thank you to you both for joining us tonight. Janice, uh, you know when you hear Tanushree speak out about this today and then you hear such a large number of voices saying why did she speak now, why did she speak now and here she is trying to scream on the top of her lungs and say but I did speak out and no one is listening to me. Uh, the fact is you have corroborated her story and, uh, and you saw it happen yourself. Well, I want to ask all those people who are saying why did she take so long to speak out, why didn't she speak all these years, does that change the truth? I mean, let's remember, let's think about the Me Too movement in Hollywood right now, right? I mean, you've got Bill Cosby, a man who's in his 90s, who's now been sentenced to prison time. Women took 15, 20, 30 years to speak out against him. Harvey Weinstein, same thing, women took 10, 15, 20 years. And 
instantly all of Hollywood stopped working with these men. That's how harshly they came down on a Harvey Weinstein, on a Bill Cosby, you know, who were considered very, very powerful men in their own right. And here we've got a Nana Patekar and the industry won't even take a stand against him. It's shameful. Um, coming back to what I saw on that set, Nidhi, I mean, I remember it, you know, it's, it's one of those stories as a, even as a young reporter that just stays with you because it's like, why did so, so things get so out of hand? What was the need to call goons on set? What was the need to break her car? What was the need to intimidate her and bully her? Why were three men standing in a corner of that set, you know, while the lead leading lady of that song looked extremely humiliated, embarrassed and nervous? Why were they standing in a corner and, you know, discussing and discussing ways to change the dance step when you could tell? I mean, I could tell and I was at least a good, you know, I was standing a far distance away from her, but I could tell from her face that she looked upset. And there was not a single person on that set who went to her, who was trying to console her. I believe, you know, now she's told me that she even spoke to the director that day and said, you know, I'm very uncomfortable and I'm not liking the direction in which this choreography is moving, which of course later at night she told me was all about, you know, inserting lecherous moves so that, you know, Nana Patek could have an opportunity to touch her inappropriately. I'm saying all of this was happening. There were 50 to 100 people on that set and yet not a single person came forward to console that girl. I of course didn't know her personally. I was a journalist who had been invited along with my camera person to cover this entire behind the scenes. And now that I think about it, I mean if I were to ever see a woman in that situation again, I mean everything else be damned, I'm going to go out and sort of, you know, say, how can I help to make the situation better? And I think that's also somewhere where the Me Too and Time's Up movement has empowered us. But back in 2008, I mean, I felt terrible. I felt terrible about how they left her alone. Then what happened, where they called the goons, where they broke her car, they were banging on her vanity van door, they intimidated her, they didn't say they filed, filed counter FIRs, you know, the Cine Artists Association didn't take her seriously. So much happened. And yet, you know, 10 years later, when she's speaking out again, Again, not for the first time, she's speaking out again. We're yeah. saying, oh, why did you wait for so long? Yeah, exactly. And it's actually horrendous to see. Well, in any case, Twitter is a horrendous place, so I, I, I shouldn't even make that a benchmark for anything. And it is still uh, horrifying to see the, some of the things, you know, people are sort of saying there. Forget Twitter, Anna. The point is, what about the rest of the film industry? I mean, it is incredible that not one person, I, I understand, okay, that maybe some of them think that this is, a, you know, something that is, about two people who have differing versions of what happened. We don't want to get into that. But it didn't stop Hollywood from coming out in support of those women who spoke about, uh, you know, harassment that they faced. It didn't stop them from at least taking a stand on the issue of harassment. I mean, there's no one today who's given a sound bite saying, uh, you know, women shouldn't be exploited. This is terrible. You know, people need to speak up. They can't even say that. The reason why the Hindi film industry is not speaking up for Tanushri is because it's an extremely patriarchal industry. Patriarchal is a kind word. It's a deeply misogynistic industry. There are many film directors, producers and actors who say wonderful things on the record. But off the record, they tell you such horribly misogynistic things that it's, it's shocking because some of them are people who are making films that are, suppose, are supposedly sensitive and uh, uh, and there is such a difference between the public image they are building, the body of work and that they are building are. and who they actually are. And every time, whether it is the Hindi film industry or any industry, including the news media, let's face it, when women speak up about harassment, the reason why men close ranks is because they are worried that they may also be implicated. And look, there are a lot of good men out there who stand by us women, but as women, we shouldn't have to clarify this at every point. The fact is a lot of men are they are so inured to the misogyny around them and how they themselves are conditioned that there are even good guys supposedly good guys who will be making casually sexist remarks who will be touching you inappropriately and then saying oh come on it's just a joke and when an, uh, when someone like Tanushree speaks up each of them is st stopping and thinking oh my goodness is there something some woman can say about me let me be careful and shut up and this is the reason why I mean uh, what Tanushree said in the zoom tv interview which people are not listening to and they're just going after her saying why is she speaking up now she has clearly stated she spoke back then if you just google 
uh, you know that she, she spoke back also, there, yeah. spoke back then and um, the reason why people is because they are protecting each other and so many male stars major male stars are i mean not just in the hindi film industry are sexual predators and they will not speak up because they are worried that someone will out but them. what i don't understand janis is that if in hollywood you have men who would have closed ranks in hollywood as well right it's as much uh, a sexist misogynist place to be as as anywhere else and that's clearly sort of you see that from the testimony of so many testimonies of so many actresses today and yet in hollywood you found that people have had the courage to stand by those who've spoken up and like you said i mean a kevin spacey was dropped from house of cards just like that you know it it just i mean they had to just drop their lead actor and and that was that it it's not going to happen here but you know that's what needs to happen here nidhi i mean can you imagine um like you said in hollywood the minute there were even rumors about kevin spacey immediately with i remember within days netflix sent out a press release saying you know we're internally you know investigating this and lo and behold in less than a month they taken a decision to cut him off the finale season i mean this is a man on whose show they had mounted the entire you know all the all the seasons that came out of house of cards were mounted on kevin spacey's shoulders that is the that is a you know repercussion of just a rumor eventually of course he was found to be guilty that's what needs to be needs to happen here but just like anna said they're all protecting each other who's going to speak out when everyone's in cahoots with each other when everyone is colluding i mean even if you've not done it directly or you've not you know sexually harassed someone yourself you've been in cahoots with someone else who has so who's going to speak out because you're so worried that if i speak out oh well they may out me but honestly that's what needs to happen over here nidhi i mean you know we need to find a way and i think the mainstream media you know channels like yours shows like yours we need to keep this conversation going in mainstream media because that's when that conditioning will change you know that conditioning where leading men feel like they can get away with things on set they can get away by you know manipulating bullying harassing and you know going up to women whether it's their leading ladies whether it's their assistant directors whether it's other technicians on set that conditioning we need to change that and my hope is that if tanushree's story can create even that much of an impact where men start to get a little bit more worried about how they behave around their female co-stars and their female technicians then well we would have had some impact otherwise what are we doing this for that can be the beginning and i feel like you know once we start that once they once you know i think other women watching this show looking at tanushree's story once they realize that the media is no longer dismissing their story where their story is no longer limited to just tabloid journalism or entertainment sections of newspapers and the mainstream media is actually having these conversations investigating these stories that's when more women will But have the courage part of the problem and who is knows, the a couple of years from now maybe even six you're months you're right from now, you're right and part of the part of the problem fast. is the way entertainment journalism is is done in this country because it's done in this kind of adulatory you know not all of them i'm i'm not saying not everyone's like that but from what i have seen you know it's very like a movie is releasing come we'll give you interviews with the stars don't ask me this uncomfortable question don't ask me about politics i don't want to talk about you know two three quick yeah. points firstly one that i slightly disagree with you and janice on is that i would not give hollywood a clean chit because um You've done more stories than us. of kevin uh, hmm. stories of kevin spacey harvey weinstein and all there was a women's whisper campaign women were telling each other people had heard about these things why was it that hollywood waited for the media to investigate it for instance the academy of motion picture arts and sciences issued a very lofty statement um once all of this uh, became news in the media why could they not have invested in investigating this they had all a lot That's of people true. had heard about it so That's i true. won't give them a clean chit the reason why they um it blew they, up is they, because they blew up because the new york the times media did a story investigated yeah. it and the media was diligent in their investigation so that it was almost uh, you know it was like you could read it and you could trust those reports it was not a he said she said the media that reported in the new yorker the new york times and finally those who followed suit they went back to people who had known these women 10 years back 5 years back 20 years 
years back corroborated these stories and a lot of these women had already complained like tanushri had spoken at that time for instance the woman who had um, who spoke of uh, dustin hoffman behaving in a creepy fashion with her and talking crap to her she had complained at that time and no, hollywood did not act now women's rights are a matter of political correctness a b the media in america went after it and c sometimes because of the the outrage on the social media whatever the negatives of the social media might be the public also has spaces to hold these people accountable first second point is that uh, because this question this exasperating question of why didn't she speak up immediately a tanushri spoke up b it is not easy to speak up please yeah. guys as a woman at least as women can you stop asking that question so many of us have gone through sexual violence and we have never complained because the whole system is weighted against us and the first thing is you have to deal with it yourself third we have a case in india last year february 2017 8 months before the hollywood uh, me too movement where the malayalam film yes. industry and you came we did a, a show major on that yeah. actress Yeah. Immediately went to the police when she was allegedly raped at the behest of a major male star. February two thousand and seventeen till now, what has happened? I I I I cannot even begin to imagine the pressure, the the hell that that woman is going through. She has been extremely courageous. and the malayalam media has covered it extensively the political class in uh, kerala while they've been divided the chief minister and the finance minister of kerala have come out in support of them at least verbally i don't know what they're they doing on something. the ground and there is a woman in women in cinema collective that was formed with all yeah. major yeah. women of yeah. the kerala film industry coming together yeah. despite we all we that we had them on remember despite all yeah. that men of the malayalam film industry most of them mamuti mohan lal where are they what are they doing they reinstated dilip into the apex body of malayalam movie artists I, simply because he's out on bail absolutely so can you please people stop asking the question why didn't she do anything This immediately is why. as though the whole world immediately reacts if she does they don't they malign her the horrible things people are writing to me about tanushri datta on my twitter timeline i'm appalled uh, things no, like I, and she's faced yeah, already janis ja, ja, janis i mean i i just want to get I, i what is the sense you're getting there about how the film industry is reacting to this even privately to to what tanushri has said i mean are they just being dismissive of it uh, or are there whispers that there could be more people who may who have the courage to speak out what are you hearing so nidhi from what i'm understanding is that everyone has sat up and taken notice of this story that's something that i think is a personal hurra for all of us who are involved in reporting on this story who've come and out come out and given our version of the truth you know what we saw happen that day um privately everyone has taken note of this story privately there's a whole whisper campaign going on where i know a lot of editorials are being written right now a lot of reporters are getting in touch with other leading ladies to find out what kind of experiences they've had on set and while the leading ladies may not want to give out their name or name and shame their co-stars i know a lot of them are at least speaking out about their experiences now having said that I just feel like if this momentum carries on for a few more days if some journalists continue doing some great investigative pieces find out how can we can how can we keep this narrative going how can we sort of enable and empower other women to come out and speak their story this may actually be the start of something I'm hopeful that's the only reason I feel like I had to come out and corroborate you know the Tanushree story because I felt like if I hadn't come out and spoken out at that time hers would have been yet another story that would have been dismissed and I'm you know really been relegated to all of those yeah. entertainment sections really as we call yeah, them I'm in the really newspaper I'm really glad you did because so you witnessed what I'm happened to her right that's now very in private circles everyone is yeah. talking about this Yeah yeah no absolutely and and I and you're right I think it's the onus is then on all of us to follow up on this and and you know hopefully even off the record if some people start coming forward and talking to journalists and and saying this there is a way to do this story uh, even if it is you know on background to begin with and then and then for people to come and speak out there are 100 different ways to do 